pre-qual letter is, pre what is entail, pre-approval letter. Yeah. And there you go. And pre-approval is different from pre Hi, I'm Mallory Cuevas from Kern Schools Federal Credit Union. Thank you so much for joining us today as we answer your questions and talk through every step of the home buying process. Before we get started, I want to go ahead and have our panelists introduce themselves. So we can start right here. Hi, I'm Robin Potter, and I'm senior underwriter in the Home Loan Center for Kern Schools Federal Credit Union. I'm Monica Alvarez. I'm senior mortgage loan consultant in the Home Loan Center. My name is Jose Arellano, and I'm a local real estate agent with Miramar International here locally. So as many of you know, buying a home can be so stressful, especially if you don't know where to start. So today we want to answer your questions and help calm some of those nerves and give you relevant and current information that is out there right now. So if you have a question or something you want to know, just comment on the live feed and we'll be watching those. Lori Ormrod from Current Schools is actually sitting off camera reviewing those questions. So if you see a random hand slide in with a piece of paper, <laughs> don't be alarmed. Those are just your questions that are going to be asked during this live stream. If for some reason we don't get to your question, check back later because we are planning on answering all of the comments with comments, even if they're not addressed specifically during this live feed. So make sure to check your notifications or check back on your comment. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's start at the very beginning with, I just decided I wanna buy a house. I don't even know where to start. I've never done this before, but someone told me I need a pre-approval. So what, what is a pre-approval and why is it so important that it's my first step? Well, it, it is, it's a, a very, very important uh, part of the whole transaction. It's just getting, uh, taking the right first step. What you want to do is you want to come into the Home Loan Center, you want to meet with one of our loan officers. They will make sure they're going to review your income, they're going to look at your credit, they're going to look at uh, where your assets are, they're going to go over loan programs with you and talk to you about what, what fits in your budget. Um, they'll help you decide what payment equals that sales price as far as that goes. So you'll be better prepared to go out and uh, look in the real estate market. And uh, Jose, how important is it to you when you're meeting with a prospective home buyer to have that they've already done that homework and they know where they want to go? Yeah, once they get established and they get pre-approved, that's key because now we know we can start. For example, if you're pre-approved for say 250,000 let's say, then we can go ahead and shop for anything under 250000 and below. When you don't get pre-approved, it's like heading somewhere and you don't know where you're going, right? Yes, I want to see a $300,000 home, but you only qualify for two fifty. And so I don't want to waste your time or my time. And it doesn't really show a very serious commitment on the buyer's part to say, hey, I really want to buy a home soon, right? So it's very, very important. And not only that, though, but whenever I do schedule some showings, most of the times the agent on the other end that's selling the home, they have to make sure that is your client pre-approved pre and they'll ask for that pre-approval letter before stepping into the home. So it's very important. So so I know now I need this pre-approval, so, so what do I do? Do I, I mean, do I do it online? Do I come in? Do I call? And what do I need to bring to make sure this process goes smoothly? We have a couple options. Current schools, if you want to check in on our mortgage portal, you can apply and meet with one of our loan consultants. What we'd like to do is analyze your f complete financial picture. We want to look at your 30 days of pay stubs, two months bank statements, two years of federal tax returns. If you are in a corporation, please bring those to your appointment also because we have to give a clear picture and make sure that that pre-approval is a firm offer. 
So one more time, what, where, how do I apply for that pre-approval? What are my options again? You can apply online at www.ksfcumortgage.org. Can we also, is there somewhere, I mean, I know Kern Schools is local, so is there somewhere we can go in? Can mm -hmm. I call we're, as well? We're located at 4530 Ming Avenue. You can come in by uh, make an appointment. You can call us at 833-7926. Um, any one of our four loan consultants can meet with you and we can review your financials and get you on your way to the home buying process. So my husband and I, our credit's not that fantastic. So we're a little bit scared of this process because like I said, we've never done it. So what, what else do you look at? Do you just look at credit score or do you look at, I mean, what all do you look at? when making the approval? And there's a lot of pieces to that whole puzzle as far as that goes. And we look at the picture overall. It's all about painting a picture about uh, how, uh, how well you pay your creditors back. That is a factor as far as that goes. And we look at how long you've been on your job. How, um, how likely is it that the income that you're making right now, is it gonna continue in the future as far as that goes? What is your ability to actually make those payments back to us? And uh, we look at the, um, the assets that you have. We, we look at your um, bank statements or if you're going to be getting a gift. We, we document all of that information so that we can give you um, the best analysis possible and help direct you in what product would be the best for you to, to move forward with. With that said, we actually kind of takes us in um, to a question that just came up through, through Facebook. It mm -hmm. says, is it possible to qualify for a jumbo loan as a first time buyer? So I know it, we, that we look at the whole picture, like you said. Mm -hmm. So can you, I mean, can you plug someone in into a jumbo loan um, for, if they're a first time buyer? Is it, you know, how does that that's, work? That's interesting you're saying that because they actually have nothing, uh, there's no commonality there as far okay. as it goes. Anybody, as long as you're, um, as long as you qualify, for that higher loan amount, which is exactly what a jumbo loan okay. is referring to, is is a much higher loan amount. You can be a first time home buyer. It's not restricted to a a, a repeat uh, purchaser, purchaser or anything okay. like that. Okay, okay. So now I have my pre approval. I know how to get it. I know what to bring with me and what you guys are looking at. So then, I want to start shopping. So I hear I, I need an agent. So. We can, we can go to Jose. So right. why do I need an agent and how do I find one? Well, easy. The best way to find one is you can find me, 661-205-4920. Or you can actually log on to my website, jose.findbakersfieldrealestate.com. And when you log in, be sure you type in current schools next to your name. And it's very important to have an agent represent you. Not only do they have your best interest in mind, but the main thing is actually interview the agent, right? Because when you go somewhere, you're making a big purchase, right? And I've seen mortgages last longer than some marriages, and so that's why it's very <laughs> important that you actually interview the agent. And what I mean by that is ask them, uh, you know, what do they think about the market? Are they well informed? Um, do they ask you questions pertaining to your needs, not what the agent thinks you need? So it all that just pays, everything just has to come full circle. You have to actually feel comfortable with the agent that's going to be, you know, possibly representing you uh -huh. for, you know, not only through negotiations, but making sure that you got the best possible deal. Because, I mean, everyone, when you buy something, you really want to get a good deal, right? You walk away feeling confident and comfortable that you got exactly what you mm -hmm. wanted. Mm -hmm. So an agent is going to show you the homes that you want, mm -hmm. different areas, get you a best possible rate. Uh, best best deal on it, but not only that though is do you feel comfortable that this agent really has your interest in mind? Are there any red flags I should look for when I'm interviewing these agents? Yes, any agent that doesn't return your call or return your email <laughs> yeah. uh, in a timely manner, that's definitely a red flag because how many times you know you want to get in communication with this agent, find out what's for going sure. on with the process. Mm -hmm. He told me to call me back last week and he hasn't, you know. And it's just making sure that they're not pressuring you to say, hey, no, you get this house. This is the best deal you're going to get. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to feel pressured. Uh, the way I do with my clients, I just want to make sure a couple things. If you're renting and you get pre-approved, we go house shopping, I still want you to be able to do the same thing that you're doing, but except have a, have a mortgage payment. What I mean by that is going out to dinner, meeting with friends, mm -hmm. 
Because who wants to work day in and day out just for a mortgage payment and not actually enjoy life? Sure. Yeah. That and really it, sucks. You know, and that kind of ties back into what we were talking about with the pre-approval. Because when yep. you're there actually meeting with the loan officer, that's what I was talking about budget. Budget, budget, budget is so important. Yeah. It's not about how the math works and I get to qualify for so much. Right. It's yeah. about what really works in your budget. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, which is one more question about the agent, choosing an agent. So. What if I go through this process, I interview a couple people, maybe one's a friend or, I, you know, whatever, and I decide I don't want to use an agent. Am I going to get blacklisted in the industry or if I no, choose one over the other? No, or? It's, it's not. A lot of times when people try to go buy the homes for sale by owners, um, a lot of times they don't know what to expect, Espe mm -hmm. especially if you're buying a home for the very first time. Mm -hmm. um, you have that inexperience where a lot of times they can take advantage of you say, oh, you know what, we can get a good deal. You don't know what's going on with the house. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's a couple things that an agent, like myself, make sure we have certain things in place. Mm -hmm. A home inspection, so you know what's going on with the house. Mm -hmm. A termite mm -hmm. inspection. Not only that though, but when you get pre-approved through current schools, we set up an appraiser to go out and make sure that the home is worth what it's worth. Exactly. Yeah. And what I mean by that, if a house is worth 250000 and an offer gets put in and they accept it at two fifty, and the appraiser comes back at two hundred twenty-five. Then Mr. and Mrs. Seller are going to have a problem decide do they really want to take that big blow or not. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, if you just buy a home outright, you don't know the value of the home. Right. So it's always very important to get pre-approved and work with a qualified realtor that has your best interest in mind. Okay. So I kind of want to go segue into the, what we get the most questions about, which is down payments, upfront mm -hmm. fees, all of that. Um, so a question actually came in that uh, starts down that topic. So. It, the question is, is it true that I have to have 3% down? We have a couple, we have low down payments at current schools. We have a couple options. If you have, if you're a first time buyer or second time buyer, it's gonna come down to qualification. Uh, we have FHA financing. So that's geared more for a uh, first time buyer that has lack of credit history. So we do have a 3.5% down payment option available for them. We might have someone who has is selling their home, it's currently on the market, and they've got a larger down payment. So we've got a conventional financing borrower. So, I mean, the best thing to do is to call us with those options. We can give you various options. We also have adjustable rate mortgages for someone that is maybe getting a starter home, or um, this is not their forever home, so they wanna take advantage of a low start rate. So, so you said there's options, obviously, as mm -hmm. low as three and a half percent As low down. as three and a half percent down. And then are there any other fees or things that I can expect to pay when purchasing a home? Definitely. A couple things uh, to keep in mind. You hear people say, zero money down to buy a home. There's nothing out of your pocket, which is kind of misleading. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, some things that you will face out of pocket is the initial down payment. And that can vary depending on the price point. Uh, just for, uh, and as an example, um, let's just say you need a $1,000 deposit. So you got that in the back, okay? And that's gonna be coming out of your pocket. That has to be put in place into the escrow officer uh, within three days of the offer being accepted. So that's separate from the loan process completely. That is completely that's just, separate. I want my offer to be accepted. I have to yes. put $1,000 in this account yes. with the escrow company. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. and again, uh, don't want anyone thinking, oh, I, I'm only moving in with $1,000. It varies from house to house in different mm -hmm. price range, but this mm -hmm. is just an example. So $1,000, but then you have the appraisal inspection, and that vary, that'll be anywhere between 400, $450 to $500, right? So then, let's just say 500 So you're already 1500 mm -hmm. out of your pocket. And then you have a home inspection, which starts at 350 and goes on up. Mm -hmm. So you're already at 1850. Then you have a $60 termite inspection. Okay, so that you have that coming out of your pocket. But not only that, though, and the the important part is the down payment, which you talked about. Mm -hmm. It could be three as low as 3.5 percent, depending on what fits your financial budget. Mm -hmm. And then you add that to the amount. So. You know, a lot of times, if you have a good amount of money saved up, that'd be great. But there are some expenses, those inspections that we definitely recommend. We can't require you, but the appraisal, that's kind of a requirement. The home inspection, mm -hmm. is that's optional. But then the termite inspection, we definitely want to make sure that mm -hmm. you're not buying into a home that's being eaten away by termites. Right. Correct. So, um, if, so those were 
sorry, those were fees associated with putting the offer on the home and purchasing, going through the process. What about, I hear people talking about closing costs. What exactly are closing costs and, and do we have an estimate on how much we can expect those to be? It's generally depending on your um, purchase price, but um, closing costs that are involved with a transaction are title, escrow, your credit report fee. These are standard fees that we charge every transaction. And like Jose mentioned before, um, the initial deposit. All of the credits that a buyer gives in entering this transaction will be credited to the member. So it's best to um, have us look at your credit rating, look at how much you're wanting to put down, what product, and then we can give you a clear idea of how much you need to save for a home purchase. So, I'm sorry, go ahead, Robin. Actually, I was just going to say, it just really circles back to the whole pre-approval. Mm -hmm. That very first step when you're meeting with your loan officer, those are the things that they're going to line out for you. They're going to show you exactly, well, if you're looking at a house in this price range, this is what you can expect. These costs, these closing costs that you're talking about, are not just charges by the lender, but your loan officer is gonna mm -hmm. break out what the fees are with current schools, and then what the other typical fees are going to be with the escrow company, the title company, mm -hmm. other inspections that might need to be done. And so they'll give you a complete picture for that price range of exactly what you need. To, what you need. Can any of those costs be clumped into my loan, or do I need to have it saved beforehand to, to put that down? I want to start on that, and then I want to pass it over to Jose. Okay. <laughs> because uh, what we cannot do is we cannot add those costs into your home loan uh, as far as it goes in the transaction. But there are other ways to cover your closing costs, and that's where I'm going to segue to you. Yeah, so then the closing costs, the, the lender breaks it down for you so that way you're in the know of what's actually going on and what to expect because nothing's worse than being blindsided by a bill. That, wait, wait, where's this coming from? Yeah. But sometimes, on some occasions, uh, myself included, we're able to go ahead and negotiate those closing costs. So sometimes we're able to negotiate the seller to pay that for you so you save yourself quite a bit of money that way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then, uh, on that note, um, to what Robin said, if you're qualified for a certain amount, let's just say 250 and the house you want to buy is 225 mm -hmm. The bank's not going to give you that additional twenty thousand oh, dollars to right. spend with right. whatever you Good want, point. right? Yeah. Good point. And that's a common misconception that I'm getting a lot, and, and it's not the case. So, if you qualify for two fifty and you buy two twenty five, that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. You just get the two twenty five loan from the bank for that amount. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we can't go have a Vegas vacation. <laughs> 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 yes. uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I have a couple questions coming in about purchasing a second home. So I'll actually read both of these um, and then we can answer both of them. So the first one is, if I'm buying a second home, is a big down payment a must? So that's the first question. Mm -hmm. The second question is, can I use equity from the current home to purchase a rental or a second home? Good question. So they, they kind of tie together about mm -hmm. down payment on a second or home or rental. Okay, so I'll answer the first question okay. regarding um, the down payment required for a second home. And it really just, it's going to depend on if this is a vacation home. We're going to need to know if it's something you're looking to maybe go on the weekends to Pismo. We know it's hot in Bakersfield. A lot of our members yeah. <laughs> purchase. Uh, oftentimes, they're purchasing at the coast, and we can get you in with as low as 10% down. So um, it just really depends if you're going to occupy this on your weekends. Is it going to be a true investment? investment, are you going to have this re uh, tenant occupied 100% of the time? Um, I urge you again to give us a call. Uh, we can have a consultation. I can go over different options. Um, generally, it is going to be a bigger down payment. It's a higher risk for the lender. The, um, so I would say give you just an estimate. Plan on saving double the down payment it took you to purchase the home. And then the second question, I'll read it again. but. Can I use the equity from my current home to then purchase a rental or second home? You can. Actually, um, and, that, and I, I'm going to keep circling back mm -hmm. to that, <laughs> that pre-approval. But basically, um, you can take uh, uh, an equity loan or a, a second mortgage on your current residence where you live now, and you can utilize that those monies for a down payment on a new investment property. But when you're meeting with a loan officer, one of the things that they're going to want to do is they're going to take into consideration 
all the payments on both of those properties mm -hmm. as far as that goes. And they're going to make sure that your, and I'm going to throw that out there, your debt to income ratio, debt -to -income ratio. is working. And mm -hmm. it's just math. And that, and that's what it, uh, they're going to make sure that it's within guidelines and that you really truly understand the payment structures that you're getting into. Can mm -hmm. you explain a little bit what debt to income ratio is and what exactly that means? I mean, it sounds sure. a little self-explanatory, but can you expand on it? Sure. Uh, basically what it is is as a lender we look at your uh, we look at the new housing payment for your for the new house that you're going to be purchasing mm -hmm. we look at what the loan repayment is which is principal and interest and then we uh, look at what the property taxes are we divide that in, into a, a monthly amount mm -hmm. we look at the prospective um, homeowners insurance quote that you get and that's called your housing expense and so we take that and then all of the other bills that you pay during the, the month that are your installment loans, your auto loans, your credit cards, things like mm -hmm. that, we add all of that together. So we get a total monthly expense statement, uh, amount, excuse me. Mm -hmm. And so then uh, what we do is we look at your gross income, which is your income before your taxes are taken out. It's not your take home pay, it's before. And we, uh, we, div we figure out what the percentage is okay. of that. So it means mm -hmm. how much of your, your debt, that whole big picture uh -huh. of that debt, is actually going uh, coming out of mm -hmm. your gross income or your income before tax. And do you also look at payments I already have, like my car payment mm -hmm. or some credit card payments? Is that yes. factored into that debt to yes. income as well? Yes, that is in your total expense. Okay. So we look at the housing expense mm -hmm. and then we look at all of those payments that you're making on uh, that you're already making on your credit mm -hmm. cards and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then we add all of that together and look at that ratio. I want to add a point to that, Robin, is usually what I tell my homeowners that are looking to purchase a home is I ask them to analyze their debts, their budget now, and make sure that 50% of your income is free. That's a general way of just calculating your own qualification at home. Add up your debts, not utilities, because mm -hmm. you're going to be having new utilities in a new home, mm -hmm. but just take your income, divide it, simple math in half, and that will be where your budget should be. That's a good point. Yeah. Good job. And that's good because I know sometimes, you know, that's definitely the debt to income ratio. Okay. And uh, just a little tidbit to piggyback is uh, whenever you speak with a qualified le uh, lender, they pre approve you. I know there's websites out there that can check their credit for them and, you know, gives them a basis. And it's kind of, it, it's hit and miss. The best way to know what your credit score is actually is on sure. point, black and white, is going and speak to mm -hmm. a lender. Mm -hmm. And that actually for sure, for perfectly sure. segues into <laughs> the next question that came up on Facebook. Is there a minimum credit score for approval? Yes, there is. There is a minimum <laughs> credit score. Um, it would be 620. 620 um, for our FHA buyers, and like I said before, it's for someone who has maybe lack of credit history. We're not going to discourage you not to apply. If you've never had credit, you have alternative trade line credit, we will take those into consideration as well. What is alternative credit? Alternative credit might be your landlord, your verification of how you've made your housing payment, that you've paid on time in a timely fashion last 12 months. Maybe you have a jewelry bill that you're paying directly to the jeweler, um, perhaps a cell phone usage. Uh, we'll look at utility bills, how you've paid your, your gas, your electric, water. Um, we're going to take into consideration all the way you've paid your payments. What about a co-signer? Would a co-signer help if I have no credit? Having someone else on the loan? Yes, we still would have to go back to our main borrower. Okay. Which, who is applying and who's occupying the home. Okay. There still has to be an established credit score mm -hmm. okay. for that person Correct. to be uh, Got it. on okay. the application. Mm -hmm. um, so going back kind of to what we were talking about in regards to down payments and how to come up with that money, can, can I use the, the proceeds from the home I'm selling, maybe I already own a home, mm -hmm. can all of that be used for down payment and closing costs or do I need to have a savings account with this three and a half to 10% down 
waiting, you know, to use right. that to purchase a home? And that's a really good question, but actually that it's completely acceptable to yes. take all of that money from the sale of your home. And, and again, it, this is why you're working with a qualified realtor, somebody that's got mm -hmm. some experience, mm -hmm. and when you're selling that home, they're going to give you an idea of how much money you're going to get back out of your home mm -hmm. so that then you can structure where you're going to go with the new house. Sure. And exactly. uh, so it just... All of it, it all ties in together, but it's you do you do not have to have separate savings. Okay, and we really coordinate those concurrent closings with our agents. We're in communication from the very start that escrow is open. We want to make sure that home that is pending is closing concurrent to the new purchase, so that you're not in in your in-laws' home for the weekend yeah. or <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Yeah, I always tell people I'm in the business of helping people sell their home and move into their new home, mm -hmm. not selling their home and leaving them homeless smoothly right? smoothly yeah. the key yeah. is smoothly yeah <laughs> so it's and it's happened where sometimes when people want to sell their home to get into the new one that's why it's before you even sell your home talk to a lender see what you're mm -hmm. pre-approved for mm -hmm. because in most cases you're thinking you know oh I've lived in my house for a long time I'm gonna use all all my gain when I sell my home to buy a new one well, the home that you want probably isn't the amount that you're looking for, and that's where the problems arise. Because mm -hmm. if you're short another hundred thousand dollars, well, I thought I'd be able to find a house for the price that for mm -hmm. my gain from the sale of my home, mm -hmm. but that's not the case. Once you speak to a lender, they pre-approve you. Great. Now all the money that you're going to sell in your home get from the sale of your home. Then you move that on over to the other one, and then you have the financing portion. So a lot of times the mortgage is actually less because you have that big lump sum. Now. You were talking about contingencies, how we close concurrently on every, on the home. So if you're buying one home, you're selling your home, and then you're purchasing another one. But this seller wants to know that you're very serious about purchasing. Mm -hmm. So your house should be either listed and have an offer accepted, so then that way we can go shopping. And sometimes using an agent like myself, we can go ahead and make sure we, like Monica was saying, we have to communicate. Mm -hmm. Mr. Seller these sellers are going to buy your home and they're going to sell their home their home we need give us a little bit of time to go ahead and get everything in place and yes we coordinate everything so that way both homes close concurrently so that way no one's left homeless mm -hmm. so i have another question from facebook and it is how do student loans affect your ability to buy a home mm. student, student loans are a debt just like any other debt okay. Oftentimes, what you see, though, with student loans is that they're in deferment, meaning that you don't have to pay, make payments on them for a while. However, guidelines are, and we all live by guidelines, mm -hmm. uh, regu sure. federal regulations and things like that. Basically, what it states is, even though you're not currently making a payment mm -hmm. each month on that student loan, the student loan organization is going to go ahead and report the amount of money that you owe mm -hmm. okay. to the credit reporting bureaus. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do as a lender is we take 1% of the outstanding balance of that student loan to figure out what a proposed payment would be okay. eventually when you have to make that payment. And we include that in your debt to income, debt to ratio, income ratio, like I was talking mm -hmm. about before. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. wow. So um, let's go back. I know we've kind of talked a lot about it, but I know it's a question we get a lot on down payments. So we hear on the radio, we hear all over, down payment assistance, down payment assistance. I know, Jose, you mentioned a little bit about the stuff, the advertising out there, but can we talk about that? Is that something, I mean, what does that mean when they say down payment assistance or zero down? Um, what exactly does that mean? Hmm. So for me, down payment assistance would be something that would have to tailor to someone's specific financial needs, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think Monica and Robin will be able to answer a little bit more about mm -hmm. that, but um, it has to make sense to you. All the numbers make sense, and speaking with one of these lenders definitely will be able to give you a better idea of what down payment assistance is. Yeah. And, so, and basically what down payment assistance is is exactly that. You're, you're actually getting another loan. That's when they say, oh, it, it doesn't cost any money to get in the house. You're actually getting, uh, in some cases it can be a grant, but you're actually getting a second mortgage. So you're having a first and a second mortgage, and typically those type of loans and that type of financing is a higher than normal uh, interest rate than you would be mm -hmm. paying. So mm -hmm. if you had saved up your 3.5% for your FHA loan and you were able to put that in and you didn't need to have that down payment assistance, your interest rate might be, and I, I'm just speaking uh, as an example, your interest rate might be 4.5%. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But if you're using down payment assistance, 
that same FHA loan that's tied to that grant or that uh, down payment mm -hmm. assistance is now going to cost you five and a half, six percent. So meeting with a loan officer, they're going to they're going to show you what those differences are, and th and sometimes it's better to just maybe have a plan. Mm -hmm. And save mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and keep that and making sure that you're not paying a lot more money in the long yeah, run sure. just to get in for no money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or and when you do borrow those down payment assistance, you're visiting us in five years to refinance out of that loan. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So Robin, you actually touched on it a little bit, but I, I'd like you to expand on when I make my monthly payment, I you know, there's Currently in my current home, I see all these different things, but I've never known what they mean. So what exactly makes up my monthly payment in regard? I know you touched on it, but can you explain? In your, in your, for your new home that yes, you're purchasing. Yes, for my new home that I'm purchasing. Okay, so just as an example, we're going to say um, you have a loan amount of $100,000. So your, what we're going to do, and, and your interest rate is 4.5%. So we're going to figure out what the payment is going to be for that, um, the monthly payment. And so it's just... Uh, like an auto loan, if, if you even look at it that way. So based on the term, which is, or the length of the loan, mm -hmm. um, we'll figure out what that monthly principal and interest payment is. Mm -hmm. Then we look at the property itself, or just an estimation based on the cost of what the yearly property taxes would be. So then we take that amount and we divide that by 12. We come up with a monthly amount. And then we look at what a proposed yearly premium would be for a homeowner's insurance because all lenders require that you have what's called hazard insurance or homeowner's insurance. So my actual like tree fell on my house, I need to get it fixed homeowner's insurance? Yes. Is that the same the, thing? Like the one you so that's included in mm -hmm. my loan payment? My loan yes, it payment is. Yes, it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that, uh, the, and, and, and then there are sometimes based on the amount of money that you're putting down mm -hmm. um, that you might have more uh, mortgage insurance. And what mortgage insurance is, and we can kind of talk about that in a little bit, is basically a foreclosure insurance that is required by the lender based on how much money you're actually putting down on the property. So, so all of those things make up your housing payment. And again, we circle back, that's what is part of your debt to income ratio that we're looking at. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I know, you know, I've done those, how much is my payment going to be calculators online, mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. kind of base it off of the rates I see floating around, but it always seems like it's a lot lower because I don't think it takes into a account a lot of those, you know, the insurance and the taxes and the things that are added on the, into. Mm -hmm. You're, you're exactly right, and mm -hmm. that's what they're they're just telling you what the loan payment is, just what the payment is. It's really it. important too to consult with your agent when you're seeking a home, whether it's in a gated community, oh. you might have an association due oh, for right. that for that home. Um, so you that's something that maybe Jose can kind of let you guys know <coughs> if it's a condo or gated community yeah. how, where those fees lie. Yeah, and that's very very important because sometimes those are the little details that people think, wow, it's a great home. What does the HOA cover? Well, it varies from it. every association. You can have one where it pays for the grass. Normally, the, the outside's insured, but just knowing that amount, and it varies. It could be $54 a month. It could be as high as 200 almost $300 a month, mm -hmm. right? depending mm -hmm. on, on what it is. But it's very important to know that amount because that actually goes on top of your mortgage mm -hmm. payment, which some people think, oh, it's already in there. No, it's not. It's mm -hmm. a separate, as separate. association, mm -hmm. right? So. Most of the times, um, yes, we actually have one currently right now through current schools where the HOA is a small amount, but she was still able to qualify for that home because it fit within her budget. Mm -hmm. It's not going to put her over her max, which is very, very, very important. Yeah, and I think even um, you know other things to think about when getting into a new home, does it have a pool? That's mm -hmm. a pool yes. guy. That's you know maintenance. <laughs> right. How much grass does it have? Yep. Our yard right now is out of control because it just takes too much. So that's a gardener, you know, all of that adding into our your monthly cost, especially yes. if you've been renting and a lot of those things oh, have yeah. been Take included. Mm -hmm. yes. Right. You definitely have to add those on as an expense as part of your payment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And you're factoring all of that. And that's very important because that's why it's important to sit down with your realtor and find out exactly what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So if someone that's barely pushing it want a mortgage payment in this price range, that's great. If Do they want a big yard? I mean, a 10,000 square foot lot, I mean, that's a big yard. Do they have a pool? Yeah. It's additional, those are additional expenses. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we want to make sure that you get the best deal possible, but that you live comfortably. 
Mm -hmm. Like I said before, no one wants to live paycheck to paycheck just to pay mm -hmm. off a mortgage. Just right. live life a little bit, you know what I mean? And a little bit of research in your community, see what the taxes, um, the tax assessor has assessed mm -hmm. for certain areas. The tax bracket might be a little bit um, higher in yeah, certain different areas. Different tax uh, rates mm -hmm. based tax on where rate. the mm -hmm. homes are located. Yeah, and that's very important too because there are some websites out there that show you a house at a certain price point okay. and, and they don't give you the full amount of what your mortgage mm -hmm. would be. There are certain things that they leave, leave out just mm -hmm. to kind of entice the people and say, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can buy a $500,000 home with only $1,000 a month mortgage? <laughs> yeah. No, no, yeah. don't be fooled. <laughs> Get in, awesome. talk to a lender. I mean, yes. that's fantastic. I'd have four yeah. of them by now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's why it's very important to go in and speak with a lender and find out exactly what the mortgage is going to be at a certain price point so mm -hmm. that way mm -hmm. you're not blindsided. So we have a couple questions coming in. So the first question is, does it cost money to get a pre-approval? No. Oh, it, oh it fast. should never cost you <laughs> anything to get a pre-approval. Free. So, I mean, it doesn't matter if they come inside. It doesn't matter if they call or do it online. There's no, there's no fee to get that pre-approval? No fee. Nope. No fee. Wow. And yep. currently we do have an application waiver. If you do go onto our website, we waive your application fee. But that application fee is just, again, kind of part uh -huh, of the closing, part of the closing costs. costs. When you're moving oh, on down line, it is not to get Up your front. free approval, mm -hmm. there is no fee, no cost. No cost. And there like should never be with in. anybody. Oh, yes. Okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so I want to touch on a couple things before I answer these other questions. First, so I just we've been walking through the process. So we have our pre-approval, we have our agent, we have all these things. So the next, I want to go shopping. Mm -hmm. So. When, I guess these would be probably more for Jose, but you can, def can definitely chime in. Okay. Um, when I'm looking at a home, are there specific things I should be looking for? Yes, there are certain things. Uh, definitely, if, it, now everyone has different needs. Some uh -huh. people mm -hmm. aren't scared to put a little bit of elbow grease on the home that they, that they want to sure. go look at or they're going to purchase because they figure, I'm a, I work in construction. As long as this passes the appraisal inspection and everything else, I can fix it up, bring it, make it more modern. But some of the things, if you see a ceiling that's bubbling and an active oh. leak, um, just keep in mind that's going to be a, a headache down the line because there's a lot of renovation that's going to go in back of that. And a realtor, like I said, is going to have your best interest in mind. So if I go in and I see there's, you know, the house is not up to living standards or, or there's an odor, then mm -hmm. I'm not going to convince them, you know what, don't worry, we'll get some Febreze and <laughs> clean it up and make it, make it look good, right? I'm not going to put lipstick on the pig and say, no, this is beautiful, right? <laughs> so just making sure that, you know, if you see any odors or any walls that are falling, anything deteriorating, any active leaks, um, if the foundation's cracked, mm -hmm. um, you know, you want to go with an agent that's going to keep all those in mind and bring them out because mm -hmm. one of the things I found out is, you know, when you're buying a home and you go shopping, you're like, yes. Uh -huh. you, you just, you kind of look past the little mm -hmm. defects. You're like, oh my God, it's a four bedroom <laughs> home. It looks so great. But then while I'm looking with them, I'm kind of observing, okay, mm -hmm. well, this is, this is it. Because if I were going to buy a home, that's, I would want someone to be honest with me and tell me, because sometimes we do get caught up in the glory. Like when you're buying a new car, you're like, oh my God, this is fantastic. I, if drives great, but then you look at the reviews and different things that kind of come into play that you don't really think about at that moment. Mm -hmm. So it's very key to make sure if there's walls falling apart or, or windows cracked or don't let anyone tell you, oh, it, it, it's nothing. It's just something cosmetic. It'll be fine. Mm -hmm. No, I, be, there, there's common sense you have to really use, you know, take a step back. Okay, does this fit where I want? Is this okay? Well, the house, uh, I have to drive an hour to work. Don't let anyone tell you, don't worry, it's only an hour, it's fine. <laughs> no, you got to, you know, that's something that you have to take yeah. into consideration mm -hmm. as well as far as your budget. So just be mindful of, of that, that, you know, mm -hmm. someone that has your best interest, crack windows, any funky orders, any active leaks, or walls falling apart, mm -hmm. things like that. What about as a lender? Are there things when you're looking for a house specifically that, that could possibly make the lending process harder? Or, you know, maybe he mentioned inspection. Is, are there things like that that as a buyer you should look for that could possibly make the, the lending process more difficult? It, it really starts with what Jose was talking about. Uh, Jose's going to, you know, as, as a realtor, he's going to go in and he's going to look for all these things. So he's going to know up front. But part of getting your, your home loan is uh, 
the house itself, the property itself, is the collateral for your loan. That's what we're going to take a look at an appraisal report that is performed by a third party, uh, a professional appraiser, and he's going to go out, he, she are going to go out and uh, inspect the property, going to tell us in a, in a quite lengthy report all yeah. about the property, going to mm -hmm. tell us uh, are there any cracked walls, are there, uh, they're going to tell us all about the property, they're also going to do an analysis mm -hmm. that is going to tell us based on uh, the neighborhood, does this house really truly fit in the neighborhood? Is it? What are the characteristics of the neighborhood? Mm -hmm. uh, there are other homes within the neighborhood that have sold in this price range, and, and uh, exactly. they're simi mm -hmm. similar to this, so that's how they're figuring out what the value is going to be of that house. It's not always just what the sales price mm -hmm. is, kind of circling back to what Jose said mm -hmm. earlier. Um, you might you might make a negotiate an offer uh, for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and the appraisal comes back and says, based on all of these things in this report, it really is only worth two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. And so then, then you go back to your realtor yeah. and you start renegotiating. <laughs> but um, typically, what the the lender is going to look for, we're going to review the appraisal. That's part of what I do uh, yeah. in my job, and uh, I'm going to look at that report and analyze it and make mm -hmm. sure that there are no health and safety concerns mm -hmm. with yeah. the house, that, um, that the house is uh, uh, going to be sound enough and, and stay yeah. standing for the term of your loan. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. If you're it's getting a 30 year loan, down. is it, it going to collapse? That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, that's right. And like, like Robin said, once you get the appraisal report, they go over and say, okay, Jose, uh, this is the report came back with this. We need to get A, B, C, D fixed. Oh, I see. So then you can mm -hmm. kind of go in there, go back, have some AMO. Mm -hmm. Exactly. When you either return an offer or uh, yeah. negotiate Consult with, the with seller. your seller. Yeah. The seller, yeah. And mm -hmm. one of the things is what the appraisal inspection, when we, we get that back and there's reports on there, the ABC has to get fixed. That comes at the seller's expense, not the buyer's expense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? And all that is is basically the appraisal, the bank saying, or the appraiser, in order for you to get this loan, these items have to be replaced. They have to be replaced or repaired. There is no if, ands, or buts. There's no negotiations okay. there. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and typically what that means is kind of like I was saying, health and safety issues, yeah. meaning yeah. there's no broken pipes or leaks or anything exactly. like that. And kind of a, a good way to sum that up too is it needs to meet minimum property standards, the building standards yeah. for mm -hmm. the city or the county, wherever the house is located. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I want to move in to be able to answer a couple of these questions about the products uh, we specifically offer at Kern Schools. So the first question is, uh, do you have VA loans? We sure do. Um, and VA, we would want the veteran to come in and bring us his certificate of service. In, in, in reviewing the certificate of service, we're going to know if the, the VA, the veteran, qualifies for a zero down payment. You often hear that, and veterans are allowed to get, walk in with a dollar down. So mm -hmm. please call us um, at 833-7926 for a consultation on VA. <laughs> <laughs> it's a telethon. Oh, no. Thanks. <laughs> call now. <laughs> Um, and then the second question is, are there any lending programs specifically for teachers? Not currently, but it's not something that we're not entertaining and looking at. Um, but look on our webpage. We might be advertising something in the near future. So they, so as a teacher, I mean, they just come in as any, you know, other current schools member and uh, mm -hmm. in the same, yes. same type of products. Um, do we have any special programs for first-time home buyers? I know that's always in the advertisements mm -hmm. as well. Not currently. We do not. We're not affiliated with any down payment assistance. Like we said, we already offer a low down payment for our members. So um, we are not currently affiliated or offering that at the moment. Okay. Um, can you, I know you, Monica, actually, you talked a little bit about adjustable rates. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to that. Um, can you clarify the advantages and disadvantages of going with an adjustable rate mortgage as opposed to a fixed rate mortgage. Okay, so the advantage of an adjustable rate mortgage is that for five years or de depending on the period that you choose, because there's various options, um, we're going to give you the advantage of taking a lower start rate, okay? So that would be the main advantage of doing an adjustable rate mortgage. Um, it could be that you're here in Bakersfield for short term. Um, we don't offer a penalty on those loans, so we'd like to put you in a, maybe a, perhaps a 
temporary loan and, and an adjustable rate mortgage. And when you do sell that home, you might want to be buying a fixed rate for the, your forever home. So it's just an option that we have available. So then what happens, so you mentioned, say we're doing a five-year adjustable rate loan, or I know they, they're also called ARMS. Mm -hmm. So if you hear that term ARM, mm -hmm. all it means is mm -hmm. adjustable rate mm -hmm. mortgage. So say you're doing a five-year, so then what happens after that five years? Um, it could. Now, we don't know what the market's going to be in five years, but it could adjust, and we do have um, a cap on the adjustment. So, like I said, please consult with the loan officer. We can put it all in paper for you, line it side by side, so that you can know everything up front. You would know, like a worst case scenario, uh -huh. you would yeah. know, we, we would be able to tell you what the absolute worst sure. okay. it, the adjustments mm -hmm. could be. And the savings of taking a, a, a start rate that's mm -hmm. below, you know, this current rate right now. So then, um, in contrast, the fixed rate loan, like a conventional, standard conventional fixed mm -hmm. rate loan, that just means that the rate never changes. It's through it's the, fixed. the mm -hmm. end of your, through my house is paid off. That's right. For the full term. Off. For the, the full, full term. term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we, sorry, what, and then also I know we talked about a little bit about FHA loans, about the three and a half percent. What, are there any disadvantages to taking an S FHA loan? Uh, as compared to a conventional loan? I would say so. Um, an FHA requires 3.5% down. Conventional might be 5% down. Um, the difference in the two products is that the mortgage insurance for an FHA loan is going to be up front. It's going to be on for the full term. Conventional has more flexibility. You've already started with 5% down, 15% more. You, can, you have the option of removing that mortgage insurance. So let's say year seven, you're looking at lowering your monthly housing payment. Wow. So those would be the difference. And I'd like to, when I meet with my buyers, I like to give you both options and you can compare. Because okay. you might want to not make that offer that next month. You might want to save an additional 1%. Right. We have a question from Facebook um, and it is, do you offer refinancing options? We do. Mm -hmm. We have uh, actually all the products that we're talking about today, conventional, all the different terms. We have from 30 years down to 10 years. We have adjustable rate mortgages. Mm -hmm. uh, we offer all of those products in our refinance programs. Yes. And, and again, I would just circle back to Monica about where to call and 833 Call now. Go. Call now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then another Facebook question. How do you get rid of PMI or private mortgage insurance? Is what we talked about. Um, how do you get rid of PMI? Mm. So I you know you guys talked about that being included in your payment on some mm. of the loans. Right. Uh, and, and the first thing that you want to do is the general rule of thumb is the reason why you have private mortgage insurance or PMI or they, mm. there's different mm -hmm. names for it based on the kind of uh, loan that you get is based on the amount of money that you put down. So anytime you are borrowing uh, less than, greater than, <laughs> greater than 80%, 80% uh -huh. yeah, of, the, of the sales price, this mortgage insurance is required. So mm -hmm. typically every lender is going to look for a minimum uh, payment history from you. They're going to want to see that you have uh, been able, because Mortgage insurance is foreclosure insurance. That's all mm -hmm. it is. Basically, it's for the lender because they're making a higher risk loan to you mm -hmm. that um, that this type of insurance is required. So if you quit making your home housing payment or your your payment to us and we have to foreclose on the house, we actually have an insurance policy that will pay us off. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. So a lesser risk loan is this 20% uh, or more down as mm -hmm. far as it goes. So anyway, most lenders are going to look for the value of your home and what you currently owe on it to be at that 80% mark mm -hmm. as far as that goes. Or if you have paid, well, they're always going to check that value. Actually, mm -hmm. I'm kind of, as I'm thinking it through, this a good indicator is your tax assessment. If you see okay. that your taxes have gone up, that means equity's gone yeah, up in your neighborhood. So I always um, tell my members when they're purchasing a home, be, be mindful of your area, how much it's selling for, mm -hmm. and then give us a call and we'll, we'll take you through proper channels of seeing if that mortgage insurance, if it's time to have an appraiser come back out 
and revalue that property mm -hmm. and remove the mortgage insurance. Do I have to do a refinance at that point or is it just something I can call you up and say, hey, take this out of my payment now? <laughs> Typically, uh, we're, well, every time we're going to look to, uh, we're going to require an appraisal. An appraisal. Okay. But it's not going to be the full cost of a refinance. And, and actually, I kind of wanted to talk, uh, kind of going back to that question about refinances. Um, when you're doing a refinance transaction, you're st when you're in that, well, I'm going I'm to put them side by side. When you're buying that home for the first time, we were talking about all those closing costs that are involved. Mm -hmm. When you do a refinance transaction, you have all those same costs mm -hmm. again. So in order to alleviate or not have all those closing costs, and you want to have your, your PMI removed, then uh, you can contact your lender, the people that you're, you're making your payment to, you're making your payment to us, and we're going to say, well, we need to check to make sure we know how much the value of the property mm -hmm. is so that we can look and see, is your balance owing at that 80% number? Mm -hmm. and, okay. but, but the cost of an appraisal as opposed to a whole refinance right. Is, right. is quite a bit less. So we're going to do one more question um, as we're coming towards the end of our time. But So this question is, how soon after bankruptcy can I buy a home? Depending on if you're um, a FHA uh, buyer or a conventional buyer, um, rule of, good rule of thumb is four years from the mm -hmm. discharge date. So four years yes. from the date of, mm -hmm. of bankruptcy? Mm -hmm. Of discharge. Of, of discharge. Yes. Okay. Because there's filing. <laughs> <laughs> there's, 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 depending on the kind okay. of bankruptcy that you have, you uh -huh. yes. actually file the paperwork and then it goes through the courts, and is yeah. approved through the courts and then there is a discharge date. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That okay. is when, mm -hmm. when, when the case is closed, basically. Yeah. All right. Well, like I said, we're coming towards the end of our time, so I just want to go down one more time. Is there anything else that you guys think that a little tidbit of information that you want to share with our viewers, with uh, these prospective home buyers? We can start with you, Robin. <laughs> Put you on the no, spot. No, I was just saying. <laughs> okay, okay. 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 One of the, the main thing is for myself is the basis of everything is your credit. Don't be scared to go in and talk to a lender and find out what your credit actually is. Um, I swear it's a funny thing. Most people would rather get their teeth pulled than go ahead and get their credit <laughs> checked, right? I don't know why they're so scared. But the reason I say that is the only way to know where to move forward is you have to have a basis, right? Mm -hmm. So if your credit score isn't up to par what you want, then that's okay. You know where you can start at, and from there you work with a lender to get find out, okay, what do I need to pay off in what order to be able to get your credit to where it needs to be. So don't be scared because all of us, uh, I'm pretty sure everyone wants a piece of American Dream, which is owning a piece of property. Mm -hmm. So if you're currently renting and your lease is going to be up in the next month or even about a couple months, go and talk to a lender and see what you qualify for because mm -hmm. nine times out of ten, what you rent could Put you into a home, more. yes, mm -hmm. right, and then not only that though, but you're establishing yourself in a good position to where later on down the line you sell it, you have a little bit of equity. Mm -hmm. You sell that, then you move into the next right. home, and you have some equity, mm -hmm. then you can move into the next home. And so with students, I have students that buy condos, even if it is a one bedroom, one bath. That's mm -hmm. something that later on when they graduate, guess what? Now it's an investment property, mm -hmm. right? So all those things come into play, but the only way it's going to start is if you go and talk to a lender get pre-approved and then you reach out to me once you get the pre-approval letter 661-205-4920 or you can go to my website jose.findbakersfieldrealestate.com and be sure you put in current schools in at the end of your name so that way we can find something out there that's perfectly fit for you Okay, I just want to uh, kind of add that we are community-based. If you're in a bank and you're making a deposit, stop by the Home Loan Center. We're located at 4530 Ming. Um, on various days and times, you will find a mortgage consultant at all of our branches um, weekly. I want to mention we will start, everything is done, and it's a one-stop shop. We will start your application, the process, approving the loan, the funding, all at the Home Loan Center. So I just want to kind of mention that to you and don't be afraid to just come on in if you have some questions, <coughs> meet, talk to our receptionist, see if we have a moment to speak with you or schedule an appointment. We can give you a list of what's required so that you can be better prepared for an, an application. Mm -hmm. And, and kind of to piggyback on that, uh, one of the benefits of having everything here in town is you might have kind of an unusual situation mm -hmm. and you're not really mm -hmm. sure and mm -hmm. 
your online place where you've applied, they have to go to another state to kind of figure out what's going yep. on. You're meeting with Monica or one of our other loan officers. Jose brings you in and you say, well, we've got this really strange situation. I'm right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To make those decisions and give those answers. Yes. That's what this is all about. It's a, we're a, a, a embracing our community in, mm -hmm. a, in yeah. that respect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for You're your welcome. time today and answering oh, all you. these questions. I feel like we covered so <laughs> much information. So thank you to our viewers. Thank and you, viewers. Yes. Thank you, guys. And, <laughs> and as I said at the beginning, if for some reason your question did not get answered on during this live stream, we will be going back and answering those comments. So be sure to check. <laughs> Monica's doing her sales pitch again. Be sure to check back, check your Facebook notifications as we will be uh, manually commenting on those. And as they've said a few times, please feel free to call our Home Loan Center anytime at 661-833-7926. And thank you again for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you guys. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>